Do, 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 do. Are we on? Are we on? Oh, I think we are. And <laughs> if I'm not mistaken, I'm actually on time. I can't believe that I'm not late today. Hello, everyone. Here we go again. Hi, everybody. This is Mr. Duncan in England. How are you today? Are you OK? I hope so. Are you happy? Well, are you happy? I really hope so. I'm feeling OK today, even though my hay fever is causing me a little bit of discomfort. Let's just say discomfort. If you have discomfort, you have something that is making you feel uneasy or maybe unwell, something that's painful. You might have some discomfort somewhere in your body, maybe in your neck. You might have some discomfort. Perhaps you have some discomfort in your shoulder. Today, I have a little bit of discomfort up my nose because I'm suffering from hay fever. I hope you are great today. A fly has just bitten me. Whilst I was doing my introduction then, a large fly came down and bit me on my arm. So now I'm suffering even more discomfort. There are lots of flies around today. Welcome to England. Yes, live from England. It is a Sunday afternoon, just after two o'clock in the afternoon here in the UK. I hope you are having a good weekend. Did you see my live stream yesterday? I was on yesterday. Don't forget, you can catch me live twice in the weekend on Saturday, 12 p.m. That's midday lunchtime UK time on Saturday and on Sunday you can catch me right now <laughs> from 2 p.m. UK time as we are right now broadcasting to you live also oh my goodness yes there is more there is a new full English lesson every Wednesday to enjoy as well so many th oh I can't believe there are so many things for you to enjoy on my YouTube channel I really must admit, as I mentioned yesterday, I think that I'm actually losing weight because of doing my live streams. I'm actually losing weight. I can't believe it. <laughs> I'm suffering so much discomfort. I've just been bitten. Can you see it? It's very small, but a fly has just bitten me on my arm. I've been bitten by an insect. What a pain in the neck. Don't forget also, there are some details I can share with you right now. If you want to follow me on Facebook, there is my address. Also underneath, you can see the email address. You can write to me. And don't forget, I do all of my work for free. Everything you see is free. I don't charge you for anything. But if you feel like making a donation to my little PayPal account, so I can continue doing this forever and ever and ever. Then please send a donation to my PayPal if you can. And if you can, I will be very grateful because that means I can carry on doing this. So here we go. It's not an ordinary day today, by the way. It's a special day because today, well, not exactly today, but tomorrow, the 15th of July, it will be the anniversary of my first ever live stream. So tomorrow will be the anniversary. But of course, I'm not on tomorrow. So instead, we are going to celebrate the anniversary of my first ever live stream. Would you like to see the first few moments of my first ever live stream? Do you want to see it now? OK, I will repeat this later. So here it is, three years ago, this is the very first moment of my very first live stream. And here it comes right now. Oh, hello there. Hi, everybody. This is Mr. Duncan in England. It's now one minute past one o'clock on Friday the 15th of July 2016 can you believe we are halfway through 2016 already I can't believe it welcome to English live this is the first ever one the first ever time that I've done something 
live across the world wide web and there it was my first ever moments the first ever moments from my first ever live stream that took place three years ago tomorrow not today but I thought today we would mention it three years I can't believe it and there is an interesting story surrounding my live streams it all happened by accident it all happened just by chance one day I was sitting in my studio a little bored a little frustrated I wanted something to do so I decided to hook my camera up to my computer and then I realized that I could actually send out a live stream on my YouTube channel so I tried it just as a test and one or two people actually joined in on the live stream so I thought oh this is interesting oh I want to find out more about live streaming it would appear that a lot of people are interested in watching YouTube personalities and me broadcasting live on YouTube so that's where it all started just by chance on an afternoon when I was feeling a little bored a little frustrated maybe a little lonely perhaps so that's how it all started that's how my live streams began three years ago I can't believe how fast the time has gone it's gone by so quickly don't you think so well I think so anyway many people are also joining in on the live chat thank you for joining me we have who do we have we have Alan gear hello Alan gear nice to see you here also Chris Olga Julie Vo, hello Vo or Vu, watching in Vietnam, I think. <laughs> I do wish the flies would stop biting me. <laughs> I've been bitten twice on my arm by a very angry fly. I think it was a horse fly. I hate flies, I really do. I know I mentioned this last week, but I really hate flies so much, especially flies that bite you. I don't like them at all. Beatrice is here. Hello, Mr. Duncan. Happy anniversary for your live stream. Yes, three years ago I started doing my live streams, but it's still not as long as the amount of time that I've been doing my English lessons on YouTube for. Do you know how long I've been on YouTube? 12 years. This year I am celebrating my 13th year on YouTube hello Chris I hope everyone is well I hope so too Waller is here hello Junjun hello Junjun I've never seen you here before if it is your first time please let me know also we have Heber hello Heber yes I like your music it is like bossa nova bossa nova bossa nova is a style of music it has a very rhythmic beat so that's bossa nova is it raining mr duncan it isn't raining but i did bring my umbrella into the garden just in case so just in case it starts raining who knows i have my umbrella ready just in case it starts to rain so far there is no rain in fact the forecast for today is no rain but it is very cloudy very cloudy can I just point something out I know I didn't mention this yesterday I'm going to mention it now you can watch my live stream if you are watching on certain devices you can actually watch my live stream with subtitles and there you can see there is the button that you have to press so if you press that button there you will actually get subtitles on my live stream oh fancy pants so you can actually watch now as I'm broadcasting live with subtitles and there is the button press that button and as if by magic you will see the words on the screen that I'm saying to you live and 
don't forget there are captions subtitles available on all of my video lessons is it about to rain no Francesca I can promise you now it looks as if we are not going to get any rain today yesterday it was so sunny in fact it was so sunny I had to get a special piece of equipment to fit to my camera and someone asked Mr Duncan what is the thing that you put on your camera yesterday what what actually was it can you tell us what it was it was one of these and this is a very useful item this particular thing is called a neutral density filter neutral density filter and this is a very special thing that you put over the lens of your camera and what it actually does it evens out the light that the camera is receiving so the camera is receiving light light is going into the camera but this special filter will even out the light so you won't get any bright spots so it should all look even so there you can see what will happen if I put that over the camera you will see straight away <laughs> it goes very dark but I also have an, an ND filter a neutral density filter on my camera right now so I'm actually using one on my camera at this very moment just in case it gets too bright so thank you to those who asked Mr Duncan can you tell me what it was you put on your camera yesterday so now you know so many technical things to talk about today oh my goodness we are talking about books today stories books I will show you some of my favorite books that I've read over the past few years so books that I've read over the past few years I'm going to talk about those also words and phrases that are connected to reading books publishing and the different types of stories that you can read so all of that coming up later on don't go away it is a Sunday afternoon and this is live English in your ear it certainly is there is a very serious storm a very serious storm taking place in South USA the southern USA New Orleans is being battered by Storm Barry it's a very interesting name it's, it's I don't know why they chose Barry but Storm Barry is currently battering New Orleans in southern United States and I noticed that they have sent a warship they have actually sent a warship there and can you guess the name of the warship can you <laughs> I'm going to show it to you now here it is <laughs> there it is on the screen right now can you guess the name of that particular ship it has a special name and it made me very excited yesterday when I heard it on the news so there you can see a US warship but it has a very special name <laughs> and it has been sent to the south coast of the USA to deal with the the terrible storm that's taking place storm Barry or some people are calling it hurricane Barry back to the live chat very quickly Alessandro hello Mr Duncan it's always nice to see you again your lessons are very important thanks a lot for that it's very kind of you to say so Palmyra says hello Mr Duncan hello Palmyra nice to see you again as well Mika hello Mika a big hello to Japan as well I mentioned Japan yesterday because the Japanese Space Agency has sent a small probe to an asteroid yes Mr Duncan as you said yesterday the Japanese Space Agency has gone to the surface of an asteroid and the name of the asteroid is Ryugu Ryugu I hope my Japanese is okay <laughs> so the the asteroid is called Ryugu is that a Japanese word is that a word in Japanese what does it mean 
I'm very interested to find out so yes congratulations once once again I did mention it yesterday that Japan has sent a small probe to an asteroid hello also to Metin hello Metin nice to see you here today here is an object that you are going to see a lot of on Wednesday there is a new full English lesson being published on Wednesday and if you have missed any of my full English lessons they are my recorded lessons you can watch them on my YouTube channel they are available to view the flies are eating me I am now being eaten alive by flies so you will see a lot more of this particular item this is a can I showed you this yesterday on my live stream so anything else to show you anything interesting oh here's something I want to show you now this is something that in my life I have stepped on many times have you ever stepped on one of these oh dear can you see so this is a plug this is something you use to feed electricity from your electricity supply into a device and there you can see there is a plug but sometimes these are left on the floor and if you are very unlucky you might actually step on one of these you might actually put your foot on one of these things and I can say now I can tell you now quite confidently it's very painful so have you ever stepped on one of these have you ever trod on one of these the word trod that's an interesting word the word trod is the past participle of tread so you tread on something you step on something you step onto something we can also say trodden trodden so the past participle of tread can be trod but it can also be trodden trodden so have you ever trodden on one of these did you ever tread on one of these with your bare feet can I just say now it is very very painful a lot of discomfort there's that word again discomfort I've been using the word a lot today hello mr. Duncan I really love you Gwilherm hello Gwilherm Bello nice to see you today where are you watching and is it your first time if it is your first time watching today please tell me please say mr. Duncan it's my first time here today Adele is here hello Adele nice to see you here I have a little bit of hay fever today not too much it's not too bad but yes I am suffering slightly from hay fever and also <laughs> fly bites <laughs> the flies keep biting me Abdul hello mr. Duncan lots of respect and respect from me oh that's very kind of you thank you Abdul for that also we have Mary Zeus or Mary Mary Zeus I hope I pronounce your name right happy Independence Day for France oh hello Beatrice French Independence Day I suppose I should play the French national anthem but I don't have it unfortunately <laughs> Abdul sir the World Cup is going on between England and also New Zealand the World Cup I thought the football had finished I thought the football was over Uma Umeima hello Umeima I love your garden it is so lovely and you seem very relaxed 
it is a nice place to come out into I do like being in the garden a lot of people have asked mr. Duncan what happened to your studio you never show your studio anymore well to be honest with you I have actually moved a lot of my studio equipment out here so it's now out here in the garden Kathy cat hello mr. Duncan yes please I would like to see it you would like to see what Ooh. I have checked yesterday's lesson mr. Duncan isn't it nice to be healthy doing a live lesson yes it is I would describe myself as a very healthy person I do exercise a lot I don't have any bad habits so I'm very lucky because I don't have any really bad habits so I don't smoke uh, I don't really drink a lot of alcohol even though I like to have a little drink now and again not all the time just sometimes but I don't smoke I suppose my one bad habit would be chocolate sweet food so yes I think I think my weakness my, my real weakness is sweet food I think so hello also from Francesco hello Francesco nice to see you here today also to Belarusia I said hello to Belarusia and I was very concerned to hear your news about your mother Nandish is here England is going to win the World Cup the World Cup are you talking about football or cricket I didn't realize there was a football World Cup taking place I know a few days ago that the, the women's football tournament was taking place the women's World Cup was taking place the United States was the winner by the way of that congratulations your live lessons are very nice yes the first time you did it was July the 15th 2016 yes three years ago the first time I did a live stream ciao mr. Duncan hello again you are against the mosquito sting you must put on long pants or trousers so yes I am wearing my long trousers but I am wearing my t-shirt today so the flies are landing on my arms and they are biting me they are biting into my skin hello punks oh that's a very interesting name I'd like to see you there today on my live stream punks are you a real punk are you a punk from the 1970s I hate flies too says Aurora I really don't like flies at all Mr. Duncan I am watching the UK cricket at the moment says Nandish yes a lot of people are talking about cricket I don't follow many sports in my life I'll be honest with you I don't follow many sports Mr. Duncan if you are having trouble with flies ooh, I am having a lot of trouble with flies today they keep biting me Mr. Duncan please be careful if a spider bites you you might turn into spider-man well that sounds like a good thing that sounds like a very good thing I might turn into a superhero although to be honest with you I don't think I will look very good in lycra to be honest not now anyway with my big fat belly hello to China hello I am Chinese box Liu box Liu is here hello to China I used to live in China did you know that I did I used to live in China Zhao Luiz says hi mr. Duncan it's London calling I am a Brazilian living in Beckenham oh hello to you and what is the weather like in London now I know today the final of Wimbledon is taking place today so Wimbledon is taking place and I thought it would be fun to show you the video that me and Mr. Steve made last year when we were playing tennis in the garden.
<laughs> so there it was. Now that is something we did last year, Mr. Steve and myself in the garden, and we were playing tennis. Did you like that? I think Mr. Steve is much better at tennis than I am. I'm not very good at sport, to be honest. Even at school. I know I've told this story before, that, but they wouldn't let me play sport at school. Can you believe that? They wouldn't actually let me play sport at school. They said I was too fragile. Oh, isn't that lovely? <laughs> and it scarred me for life. It really did. I like chocolate very much, says Lurist. Hello, Lurist. Nice to see you there. Hello, Sukat. Mr. Duncan, why don't you put some repellent on your skin to keep the flies away? I think that's a very good idea. Yes, repellent. So you might put something on your skin to keep the flies away. So repel means to push away. So repellent is something that will keep things away from you. Repellent. That is a very good idea. I like that idea very much. Yes, Wimbledon is taking place today. Yesterday, the women's final happened. And today, it's the men's. I miss Mr. Steve, says Julie G. Well, Mr. Steve is now a very busy man. He is doing all sorts of things. And that's the reason why he can't join in on the live streams anymore because he's very busy. I think that's what I want to say. If you missed yesterday's live stream, I have some good news. The spiders have gone. They've gone. They've been taken away. So we are no longer looking after the tarantulas that we were looking after for the past one and a half years. So yesterday, Steve's friend came and he took the spiders away. Saturino says, I don't like tennis because it is a posh and asymmetric sport. Some people think that, yes, some people think that people who play tennis are very elitist. I think so. Jonathan. Oh, Jonathan is going. See you later, Jonathan. I suppose Jonathan has something busy to do. He's going to have a very busy Sunday afternoon, I think so. Hi, hi, cow, Lulu. Hello, hi, cow, Lulu. How are you today? Where are you watching? Is it your first time? Don't forget to let me know. It is a grey Sunday afternoon here in the UK. It is very... I suppose the word is gloomy. I suppose so. Let's have a look at a part of English grammar that a lot of people get wrong. So I'm very quickly, just very quickly, going to explain the differences between these two words. And here they are now on the screen. The words are two and two can you see them so these two words are often confused with each other especially when writing so quite often when a person wants to write this instead they write this and vice versa so i'm going to explain very quickly the differences between these two words so first of all we have two as a way of showing direction range and also it is used as a way of expressing location or to mean before something occurs so there you can see the word to so you might say i am going to mr duncan's house or if you are going to do something in the future we can just say i am going to do it I am going to do it. So you are expressing the occurrence before it happens. You are expressing the occurrence before it happens. I'm going to see you tomorrow. I will see you. We are stating something that is happening before it occurs. 
so there is the one use and the other one that a lot of people get mixed up by is this one and this is two but with two O's the letter O occurs twice so there you can see two can mean as well also and also very and excessively so something that is more than you want we can say that it is too much too much also we can use as well I am going to the party my friend will come too my friend will come as well so my friend is coming too my friend is coming as well we can also use this to mean also also very very so something is extreme maybe you are in a room and maybe the temperature is too high you might say oh my goodness can you open the window it's too hot in here too hot I can't come to your house you live too far away and excessively something is too much something is excessive there are too many people here there are too many flies in the garden so there you can see very briefly the difference between this word and this word I hope that was helpful to you hello also to Palmyra who says my greetings to all the Brazilian people because the team won the Kappa America well done to Brazil winning a big prize there here in the south of Brazil it's too cold today we don't like it it's too cold Mr Duncan in Brazil I suppose at the moment it must be it must be autumn autumn or maybe early winter in Brazil am I right or wrong I'm very sad because my internet is bad I have a bad connection on my internet since yesterday so I can't enjoy this live stream well don't worry Helena because later when you get your internet fixed you can watch my live streams all over again and again and again for as many times as you want thank you also Saturino says yes I am I am a big fan of the greatest Brazilian football player his name is Zico Falchao Cerezo I hope I pronounce that right I think I will get into a lot of trouble there Mr Duncan you are a follower of sports when England can win I saw you both you and Mr Steve play football during the World Cup thank you Louis yes you are right there I am not a fan of sport I don't follow sport but sometimes I must be honest I do become slightly interested in sport especially when the England football team is playing in the final or the semi-final like they were last year Mr Duncan can you give me two T's or two I don't know what that means <laughs> Mr Duncan what is the temperature at the moment here it is maybe 27 or 26 well here it is very humid today apparently we've got lots of warm air coming up from the azures apparently that's what the news said last night so apparently we have a lot of very warm heat very strong heat coming up from the Azores <laughs> a very hot part of the world and that's why it's very humid today 
Although, having said that, there's no sunshine. There is no sunshine today. That's not very nice. So, do you like reading books? Do you like reading books? Do you have a favourite story that you like to read? There are many words that can be used to describe stories and books. And here, now on the screen, you can see a list of them. Can you see them? We have literature. Literature. So the first word is pronounced literature. So that means anything that's written. So anything that's written down. So handwriting or a storybook or just a piece of paper with writing on. So a general term is literature. Literature. And then the second word, there it is, is text. So text normally refers to the letters, the letters that are written down. You can type the letters, you can write the letters, you can write text. And then the third word, there it is, publications. So when we talk about a publication, we talk about something that has been published. A book, a magazine, a newspaper. So anything that is published is a publication. A publication. The thing that has been published is a publication. And finally, I'm sure you know this one. Storybook. A storybook. A book that tells a story. Quite often, a storybook will have words sometimes words and pictures or sometimes a storybook might might mostly have pictures and just a few words so storybook the words literature literature it's not an easy word to say to be honest literature text publication or publications as the plural there or storybook so there are lots of words you can use to describe anything that is printed anything that is written anything that is published for people to read Beatrice says I like Jane Austen's stories yes Jane Austen wrote lots of stories dramatic stories I want to learn English without knowing where to start well you always start with the most simple words the simplest form of any language is where you begin when you start learning it hello to India hello India I believe now I'm sure yesterday I also read in the news that India is planning to send a spaceship to the moon am I right there is that true or did I just imagine it was it just in my head I don't know but I do believe that India is also about to send a probe or maybe even people to the moon Julie G did you say that mr. Steve isn't going to be here anymore in the live lessons well at the moment he won't be here because he's very busy doing other things like yesterday he was busy and today he's also busy that's all I can say really to be honest mr. Duncan apparently you are an outdoor person sitting in a dusty room is not what you are fond of yes Valentin I think that is that is a very fair comment I do prefer being outside to be honest you can enjoy the fresh air you can enjoy nature well sometimes you can enjoy nature unless of course the nature starts biting you in which case it stops being fun good afternoon mr. Duncan Jamelia or Jamila oh hello Jamila I haven't seen you for a long time good afternoon greetings from Malta you have a very nice color behind you lots of green things yes you can see behind me I am surrounded by green trees 
green grass <laughs> I think it is safe to say that the main color on the screen today is definitely green I think so Francesca galore what does it mean mr. Duncan galore galore means lots of so if you have words galore it means you have many words galore is a way of expressing lots of you have a large quantity of something you have English words galore Mr. Duncan I need some practice with my spoken English well you are in the right place because to speak English well you also have to listen to English being used hello Mr. Duncan from Marrakesh I like Marrakesh I would like to go there one day Marrakesh I want to sample some of the Moroccan food I really do Mr. Duncan literature comes from the Latin literae you are right yes there are many derivatives of the words that I'm going to show you today in fact here are the words that I will talk about today and there you can see on the screen right now we have story novel saga factual fictional protagonist antagonist first person third person biography autobiography so there are some interesting words that we are going to talk about today on the live stream some of them you might know some of them you might not know so please stay with me lots of things still to come on the live chat today did I see a super chat earlier I'm not sure did I see a super chat on the screen I think I did or did I imagine it I'm trying to find the super chat so I think there was a donation made here on the super chat maybe not have you read a poem by Edgar Allan Poe called the Raven well one thing to mention about Edgar Allan Poe he had a very dark sense of storytelling he was very fascinated by the macabre or the things that are scary or the things that horrify people or maybe the things that scare people Edgar Allan Poe had a deep fascination with the dark side of humanity and also he was obsessed obsessed by death as well he, he used death a lot in his work in fact I, I believe he once did he did he describe once sleep as being the little slice of death I believe he did Sarah hi Mr. Duncan hello to you hello guys Orac. hello Orac. nice to see you here today Vlad says oh Mr. Duncan I wrote a novel in Spanish and I'm going to publish it on Kindle in August thank you Vlad for letting me know and this is one of the great things about the internet nowadays anyone can publish their own work without having to go to an agent so it is possible nowadays to publish your own work on the internet without having to go to an agent because having an agent can be very expensive and having a person who publishes your work can, can also cost you a lot of money so these days it is possible to publish your own stories or textbooks on the internet so some people sell them on Amazon Amazon Kindle my biggest dream is to meet you Mr. Duncan why would you want to meet me I can't imagine why but yes writing is a great way of expressing yourself it's also a very good way of improving your grammar and your confidence with how you 
process English in your brain so writing can be a very good way of improving your English and you don't have to write something special it doesn't have to be great just write anything that's what I used to do when I was at school I used to write lots of stories and I used to always take them to school and show them to my English teacher and then she would read them she would take them home and read them and then the next day when I saw her in the classroom I would always ask did you like my story and she would say yes very interesting so my English teacher always encouraged me to to write Chris says I did a thesis on the work of Edgar Allan Poe as my university project and it is archived in a special library in the university Ooh, it must have been a very interesting thesis I think so Jamelia yes Mr Duncan I cannot see you live but I saw the repeat thank you always you are welcome Jamelia and I hope you get your internet sorted out very soon hello Mr Duncan I read some technical papers but sometimes it's hard to understand what it is all about I did mention this yesterday about general English so if you are using everyday English so English that you use every day in your normal life then it can be easier to learn however when you go into academic English or specialist subjects sometimes the English can be very complicated even for people who speak English as their first language so sometimes you need to know something about the subject that the person is talking about Mr Duncan you are the best English teacher I have ever seen your teaching method is really superb please take my heartiest love and stay happy greetings from Bangladesh you are welcome no problem I love doing this I love teaching on YouTube and I love sharing my time with you hello Mr Duncan do you think it's a good idea to listen to videos in English without fully understanding them thank you Taylor yes I think that is a good idea that is how I learned Chinese when I was in China I wanted to pick up some Chinese so I used to watch television programs and sometimes if I was watching a TV show or maybe the news and I would try to mem memorize some of the words excuse me my throat has gone very dry excuse me a moment Are we back that was my hay fever unfortunately my hay fever is affecting my nose and my throat today but yes when I was in China I used to listen to Chinese TV and I would try to pronounce some of the words that they were saying I would repeat them and then later I would ask one of my friends my Chinese friends what the word meant so yes I, I think it is a good idea it is actually a good idea and of course you can also read the subtitles as well what do you suggest we should do to become a writer well first of all you have to have an interest in writing so I think most people who become authors an author is a person who writes that is their profession that is their occupation they are an author author a person who writes is an author so yes uh, I think that is a good way to start you have to be interested in the subject so if you have a favorite subject some people like certain types of stories or maybe you have an interest in a certain subject so maybe you can put your writing skills forward and use that subject 
so yes I think you have to be interested in writing to become a writer so you have to have the passion it's a little bit like doing this it's a little bit like being on camera doing the live streams if I wasn't interested in doing this then I wouldn't do it but the reason why I do it is because I'm interested in doing it so sometimes interest can be the best way to start doing anything so something you are interested in can become your profession or your job so we looked at some words earlier now we are going to look at themes so stories can have many themes so the theme of the story is what the story is about or the things that the story concerns so the things that are in the story we can talk about the way the story makes you feel the things that are discussed or maybe the actions that take place in the story so story themes and there are different types of story theme we can have crime stories crime stories stories to do with criminal activity crimes that take place maybe a bank robbery or maybe the story of someone who was murdered romance oh I like romance a lot I must admit I really do like romance so romance a lot of ladies like the romantic novels and stories romance one of my favorite types of book is fantasy fantasy so you might describe Harry Potter so Harry Potter books can be described as fantasy also Lord of the Rings the original books Lord of the Rings the Hobbit we can describe those as fantasy novels or fantasy books and then we have science fiction science fiction books or science fiction stories tend to occur or tend to take place in the future or in space so quite often science fiction will involve living in the future or living or having adventures in space and then history ah so you can have historical stories so something that is based on history maybe history that did happen or maybe something that is created or maybe something that is based on an event that occurred in the past so yes you can have history stories about things that happened in the past and they can be true or real or they can be made up and of course we have children's books and there are lots of children's books there are many famous people now here in the UK who have appeared on television for various reasons and now they've gone on to write children's books so there are many famous people who now besides being famous for their main talent or their main career they are also writing books for children Ricky Gervais is a very good a very good example of people who do one thing but also they go on to write books for children Mr Duncan your motivation never dies and it's good it is a good thing for us thank you Louis that's very kind of you to say science fiction there is also there is one I missed out on here on my list horror horror so things that are scary stories about ghosts stories about evil spirits stories about people who go crazy and do horrible things we can say horror stories horror stories a story that makes people feel terrified or afraid 
I suppose, yes, Valentin says, Mr. Duncan, can you please mention comics? It is a part of literature. Well, I did kind of mention that when I mentioned pictures and words. So, yes, comics quite often use illustrations or pictures, but also they have some sort of narrative that explains what is happening in the story. So you can see the comic, you can see what is happening, and also you can read on each page what the characters are saying. So I suppose a good example would be graphic novels or graphic comics. So a graphic comic is something that is very explicit. It shows very clearly what is happening. Graphic comics. And when I was a kid, I used to read Spider-Man comics and also the X-Men. So X-Men, Spider-Man, Superman. So I used to read all of these comics when I was a kid. But of course, comic books have become very big business nowadays. And you don't need me to tell you that if you go to the cinema, you will see lots of superheroes in the movies. And most of them are based on comic books or comic book characters. So, yes, there are quite a few. It's very nice of you to join me today in the garden. It is very hot, by the way. It is so hot out here. Really hot. It's very humid. Habib is here. Hello, Mr. Duncan. My sweet teacher, how are you? How can I improve my pronunciation in English? Two ways. Listen, repeat. That's it, really. So listen to the English. Listen to the way people use English. And if you want to change the way you speak, you can. But it, of course, it, just, it does take time. It takes a lot of time and a lot of effort as well. What is the most important advice you could give to an English learner who doesn't live in an English environment? I talked about this yesterday, and this is a very common question. There are two ways of learning English if you have no one around you to share your interest with. You can join a group of people or you can create your own group. So maybe you can create a group of people. You can get in touch with people who have a similar interest in English and you can share your love of English together. Also, you can learn English on your own. It's not easy. You need lots of motivation to do it, but it is possible. You can do it. And a good way to do that is to listen to your voice, record your voice and listen to it. Hello there. My name is Mr. Duncan. Hello there. My name is Mr. Duncan. So you can listen to your voice. You can listen to the way it sounds. And if you don't like the way you sound, you can change it. But it does take a lot of time and a lot of patience and you really do need to be motivated mr duncan hello to engineer asma i like the british accent especially the cockney accent hello there hello it's mr duncan here and i'm talking to you from the old smoke the old smoke we call landon the old smoke yeah it's a it's a bit smoky sometimes because of all the buses. It's a real pain in the aris. <laughs> That's right. Listen and repeat. That is the best way to improve your pronunciation. Sometimes the simplest methods are the best ways to do something. I, I always teach people and I remember in China I used to tell people sometimes learning something is not difficult it isn't complicated sometimes the rules are actually very simple the hardest part is following the rules the hardest part is actually going along with the rules so tomorrow it is a special anniversary tomorrow the 15th of July 2016 I did my first ever live stream and this is how it started.
oh hello there hi everybody this is mr duncan in england it's now one minute past one o'clock on friday the 15th of july 2016 can you believe we are halfway through 2016 already i can't believe it welcome to english live this is the first ever one the first ever time that i've done something live across the world wide web so there it was the first time i ever did a live stream and that was the opening moments of the first live stream that i ever did way back in 2016 of course i have been on youtube for nearly 13 years teaching english hello to so so sane so sane sarah hello to you aurora says i hate hearing myself i don't like to hear my own voice can i just say that your your problem is not unusual a lot of people don't like to hear their own voice but can i just say something the more you listen to yourself the more you begin to feel relaxed about listening to yourself so sometimes doing something for the first time can make you feel nervous or anxious or maybe you just don't like it but can i just say the more you record your voice the more you listen to your voice the more confident you will become using it trust me you have to trust me on that one aurora says i can hear a dog barking there are many dogs living around here there are quite a few dogs personally i don't have a dog myself although i do have mr steve <laughs> he is very similar to a dog especially one that hasn't been house trained he still sometimes leaves little poo-poos on the carpet hello to we van kwong i often watch your videos and repeat what you say it helps me to to improve my pronunciation so fast but people around me said are you crazy well don't worry about what people say don't worry about what people think maybe they feel threatened by you maybe they are afraid that your english will become much better than theirs so don't worry about what people say you carry on doing what you're doing if it works for you do it that's what i say mr duncan i wish you have a million tomorrow a million what a million subscribers a million flowers a million smiles maybe maybe not let's also have a look now at some particular words to do with books and stories and here we go again so now we have the style of writing when we call something the style it means the appearance or the impression that it gives so the style is the particular way a person does something so certain writers certain performers maybe certain singers will sing in a certain way they have their own style they have their own way of doing it so their style of writing is the way they do it the way they tell a story the way they explain things or maybe the way they use dialogue oh that's a good word i like that word dialogue dialogue is basically the words that are used to say something dialogue so styles of writing so in this sense we are talking about the way the narration or the way the story is narrated the way the story appears on the paper you can write in various ways you can write using the first person the first person is the personal person the person who is actually speaking the person who is telling the story so sometimes a story is told directly by the person who is involved 
and there you can say the first person so some people write in the first person tense so they write by using the person who is describing exactly what happens so they are the person that tells the story then we have the second person who is the person who is being spoken to so maybe also once again the addressee is the person who is being spoken to the speaker and the person who is being spoken to so maybe in a story you will get a two-way conversation so the second person is the person responding to the first person so that is another way of writing and a very common way of writing is using the third person the third person so many people when they want to express something to show action you will often use the third person or the third party so the third person is the, the other person who is involved in the situation so the sound or the narration of the story is the third person so that person is involved but also they are in the story and they are telling the story at the same time hello sir why don't you read my messages Aishwarya Aishwarya hello sir you didn't read my messages well I'm reading it now sometimes I don't see everyone's messages so I do apologize if I miss you out so if I don't read your message please don't shout at me but sometimes the chat does move very quickly once again the third person the first person is the speaker the person speaking in the story the second person is the addressee the person who is being spoken to and the third person is the third party so they might be the person being talked about or they might be the other person who is expressing what is happening in the story or if you talk about a person who is not there you might talk about them in the third person it is a style of writing in fact they are all styles of writing Sarah mr. Duncan can reading books improve my English yes of course no doubt about it do it that's what I say <laughs> and if you see any words in the story that you don't understand you can always write them down and check with a dictionary or maybe with me I can hear a helicopter going over your house I think so yes sometimes we get helicopters sometimes we get aeroplanes going over the house when I studied literature at school there were many books that we read and we had to write essays about one of them in particular was Lord of the Flies so Lord of the Flies which is a brilliant book is one of the first books that I read whilst studying literature at school a rather dark and somber story as well talking of story here we go now with some words to do with stories so what exactly is a story how do we describe a story well a story is an account of imaginary or real people and events told for entertainment so the most basic way of expressing what a story is is that we can also use story to describe the plot or storyline I don't know what that is flying over my house <laughs> but it's very noisy and rather distracting a report of an item in the news or in a newspaper something that you hear that you didn't know before can also be described as a story a news story a piece of gossip 
Oh, something that you hear from another person mm, can be described as gossip. But also we can say story. My neighbor told me a very interesting story about the guy that lives up the road. So gossip can also be described as being a story. One person's represent representation of the facts of a matter. So the facts about the present situation can also be a story. You are talking about something that is happening now or something that has recently happened. And the word story comes from the Anglo-Norman French estori, estori, which itself comes from the Latin historia. Now, that is very interesting because you can see there, there is an interesting word, historia. Now, historia is where we get the word history from. So history, basically, is a story that's been recorded. So when we talk about history, what we are actually talking about are things that have been recorded, things that have been written down and then passed through the generations. So that's where we get the word history from and also the word story. Story. What type of story do you like reading? Do you like reading stories? I will show you some of my favourite books that I've read over the years in a few moments. Ah, now we have a type of book. This is a type of book. Novel. Novel. A novel is a fictitious prose or narrative of book length. So a long story, a long story can be described as a novel. A fictitious prose or narrative of book length, typically representing character and action with some degree of realism. So quite often, if you read a novel, some of the story will be based on real things or real events or maybe just real life, the way things happen from day to day. And for those who are wondering what prose means, prose is written or spoken language in its ordinary form. Plain or dull writing, discourse or expression can also be described as prose. So the word prose can be used in a negative way. The word novel comes from the Italian novella, which simply means new. And it comes from the Latin as novellus, novellus. So it originates in Latin as novellus. And now we say novel, novel. So basically the word means new. It can also be adapted to mean new story as well. A new story. In fact, that's why we call anything new that we hear the news. So the news is basically all of the new stories that have occurred. And that's why we say news. <laughs> oh, here's an interesting one. Saga. Saga. Saga is a long story of heroic achievement. Ooh. Especially a medieval prose narrative in the Old Norse or Old Icelandic. So there you can see saga. So saga actually originated as describing any story from the Old Norse or Old Icelandic. But nowadays you will often see the word saga used to mean a very long story. A very long story. Story is for the present or the past. History is for the past politics. Yes, that's right. And also anything that's happened or occurred in the past that is notable. Notable. I wonder what the oldest book is. I wonder what the oldest book is. I'm just thinking now. I can think of a couple of suggestions. 
hello mr. Duncan could you recommend some easy and real English or American cereal to improve our English understanding well Hussein anything you can watch anything a movie or a TV show maybe something that has a very simple theme or maybe a very simple story that you can follow but to be honest with you you can use anything really that is my suggestion mr. Duncan you don't know how dear you are to me hello MD Iqbal MD Iqbal Hussein hello mr. Duncan you don't know how dear you are to me from Bangladesh thank you very much for that I hope my English lessons are helpful I really do greetings from Mexico the home of the Mayan ruins thank you Juan it's very nice to see you here on the live stream dear sir we would like to know more about you and your family oh really <laughs> you are very inquisitive very inquisitive there is a TV show called mind your language mind your language it is a comedy show and it is all about people who are learning English as a second language it is actually a British TV show that was around in the late 1970s the flies are biting me it's very distracting if I seem slightly distracted it's because the flies keep biting into my body and I don't like it so yes there is a TV show called mind your language it is very funny and there are some copies of it on YouTube and I think some of them have subtitles as well which is nice how are you mr. Duncan hello Lena I'm okay thank you not too bad thank you very much so when we talk about a saga it is a long involved story account or series of incidents and it comes from the Old Norse narrative so saga a long story a long story sometimes a saga might be in many different parts you might think of Star Wars as a saga so the story of Star Wars is a continuing story there are many parts to it so it goes on over a long period of time so yes so Star Wars is a type of saga the word narrative for those who are wondering the word narrative relates to the story and the expression of occurrence either in spoken or written form so when we talk about narrative it is the way of describing something you are saying what something looks like you are describing the way something appears or maybe you are listening to two people talking about something and that is the way in which they are talking the conversation the topic the things they are talking about it is the narrative the narrative when you when you watch a TV show sometimes you will see images on the screen but you won't see the person who is talking and the person who talks is called the narrator so a narrator is a person who describes something so you only hear their voice you don't see them who are you who are you do you mean who am I well I'm me I don't know who you are <laughs> yes mind your language is a very funny TV program and it was made in the UK it was made in the UK many years ago here is another word now that I want to show you I will be going in around about 10 minutes I am going soon if you want to say something now is the time to do it <gasps> Ooh, some very interesting words here this word protagonist protagonist and this word antagonist antagonist so a protagonist is the main character in a story so when we talk about the protagonist we talk about the main character 
the central character of a story is the protagonist I, I will use another Star Wars reference <laughs> Luke Skywalker so many people see Luke Skywalker as the protagonist of Star Wars the whole story revolves around him he is the main person in the story he is the protagonist protagonist the main character you could also describe a person as an antagonist ah, an antagonist is the adversary so the adversary is the person who is against the main character or the person who might be the evil one or the bad one or maybe the person who wants to destroy the things that the main character is trying to do so the antagonist is the baddie the bad person the protagonist quite often is the good guy he is the hero <laughs> he is the main character so in Star Wars terms we have Luke Skywalker as the main character the protagonist and you might describe Darth Vader as the antagonist he is the person who is against the hero antagonistic a person who tries to disrupt or destroy another person's idea or work Mr Duncan your lessons are great they are the best on the internet thank you Dimitri for that don't forget I will be here on Wednesday Wednesday coming up on Wednesday I will show you for those who don't know live lessons Saturday 12 midday Sunday 2 p.m. both of those are UK time and there is a new full English lesson every Wednesday so I will be with you on Wednesday in a recorded lesson a recorded lesson and for those who want to get in touch you can follow me on Facebook you can find out all the information about the things that are coming up facebook.com also you can write to me at the email address which is underneath you can see it just there so there is the email address or maybe you would like to make a donation to allow my work to continue you can donate at this address send a donation to allow my work to continue because I do everything for free everything I do here I do for free I don't charge you anything whatsoever Eric says oh that's a very interesting point Eric well done there are a few movies where the antagonist wins yes no country for old men <gasps> have you seen that movie it is a very terrifying movie uh, uh, the first time I watched it I had nightmares afterwards because I kept thinking that someone was going to break into my house so yes no country for old men is a brilliant movie and I won't tell you what happens at the end just in case you haven't seen it but yes the antagonist kind of wins at the end Mr Duncan if you come to Guatemala please don't hesitate to contact me thank you Carlos that's very kind of you to say Passan says good night from Laos or Laos Passan good night to you as well are you going are you leaving me what a great live lesson Mr Duncan thanks for spending your time with us you are welcome no problem hello to oh China hello China I think there is someone watching in China hello everyone and hello to China a big ni hao to you I hope you're watching in China you might be watching somewhere else of course not necessarily China but the characters on the screen do look like Chinese that's all I'm saying 
thank you mr. Duncan for your work mr. Duncan please don't miss my name as is hello as is as is I'm not sure if I'm going to pronounce your second name as Ez Esgaroff as is Esgaroff I hope I pronounced that right hello Olga thank you very much mr. Duncan I joined you today passively and I didn't write anything but I still enjoyed it thank you very much for making live lessons so the live lessons have been taking place for three years three years I've been doing the live streams tomorrow is the third anniversary I can't believe it how did you how did you nam do says hi hello to you as well you are welcome you are welcome I really feel very happy very moved and always pleased to see your messages Ricardo thank you Ricardo Ricardo Florencio has sent 10 pounds on the super chat thank you very much that's very kind of you you can also send your donations to my PayPal as well I will put the details on the screen so there you can see just there the PayPal address right there if you want to send a donation you can it's not a problem today we are talking about books and novels stories and there are two types of story and we call these factual and fictional factual and fictional so if something is factual it is real or true so something that is true or real can be described as factual it is a fact you are writing about something that is true a true thing can be described as factual factual so any story that is describing a real event or something true can be described as factual and then we have the opposite the antonym fictional so the opposite is fictional something that is untrue or unreal something that has been made up from a person's imagination is fictional it isn't real and it isn't true mr. Duncan doesn't YouTube give you money you have a lot of viewers thank you Muller a lot of people seem to think that if you are on YouTube you must be a millionaire but can I just tell you now don't believe all the stories that you hear about YouTube personalities or YouTube publishers being rich because it isn't true I can tell you I've been doing this for nearly 13 years and it isn't always true so that's why I ask for donations that's why also I sometimes have little fundraisers as well to help me pay for all of this equipment <laughs> that you can't see at the moment because it's hidden from view but I'm surrounded by technology all sorts of technology is surrounding me at the moment so being on YouTube is a very complex thing it isn't easy to do and sometimes I can't believe that I've been doing it for nearly 13 years I can't believe it types of stories we have biography and also autobiography so a biography is a type of book or story about a person's life it is written about a person so the biography is a story or the story of a person's life the person has been written about so a person will write the book they will write a biography about someone they have no connection with and then we have autobiography and I'm very interested in autobiographies it's one of my big passions an autobiography is written by the person who the story is about 
so the person themselves writes the story about their own life so a person who writes their own life story we can describe it as an autobiography an autobiography a biography is written about someone else an autobiography is written by the person who the story concerns Vlad asks what do I do to boost my mind when I'm going to write ah again not an easy question to answer but writers quite often have their own special ways of becoming inspired to write sometimes it isn't easy sometimes a writer can sit for days weeks months or even years without writing anything their mind goes completely blank completely empty so sometimes it is possible to to lose all of the ideas your mind goes completely blank so it can it can happen sometimes even for me sometimes I wake up in the morning and I have no idea what I'm going to do on my live lesson sometimes we like your clothes your nice red hat and your red watch well this is orange this orange watch do you like my watch mr. Steve bought that for me last year for my birthday I've just realized it's my birthday soon three weeks it will be my birthday oh no is it three weeks or four weeks oh no I think it's four weeks there I feel better now apparently it's four weeks until my birthday and I will be another year older Ooh. before you write something you must read a lot of classical books I think so that's a very good idea a very good suggestion so you must have an idea you must have an understanding of how a story is is written how you express the things that are happening in the story so yes I think that's a that's a very good a very good idea so before you start writing it is probably a good idea to read other literature before you start yourself Vlad says if you want to be a writer you need to write to please yourself and then please your audience 50 50 so a good writer will often please themselves while at the same time pleasing their audience as well I think so again a very good suggestion Mika asks why don't you write your own autobiography I'm I'm not sure if my life story would be interesting to anyone it might even be a little bit depressing in places autobiographies often tend to be hiding some details yes well if you write your own life story quite often you will leave out all of the horrible bits you will make your life appear more glamorous or more fun having said that I'm now going to show you some books that I love reading and and some of them have a very similar theme so some of them have a very similar theme so here it is here is a short autobiography of a famous comedy actor so that there you can see an autobiography so this is actually written by the person themselves and it is actually written in a in a humorous way so this particular person his name was Kenneth Williams and I happen to be a very big fan of his work he is a comedy actor or he was sadly he died in 1988 so there is one of my favorite books I have read this book many times another one concerning the same person 
the Kenneth Williams diary and letters so these are the letters that he wrote to his friends he used to keep a diary and he would write quite often he would correspond with his friends and people who he worked with and once again it is my favorite actor and comedian Kenneth Williams and these are all of his letters all of his most interesting letters that have been published and this was published after his death here is another but this time this is about a different person and this time it is a biography so this was written by another person so another person wrote the story of this man's life his name was Frankie Howard a very funny man a very funny comedian and also a person that I have a lot of interest in his life story and also his work as well and here it is here is the book that I have read so many times I I actually had to buy a new copy of the book because the original one fell to pieces because I read it so many times I actually took it to China with me and I read it every night and I think I read it again and again and again so many times and here it is this is the Kenneth Williams diaries an amazing book these are actual excerpts from his diaries that he kept for over 50 years over 50 years of diary writing and all of this book contains excerpts from his diary and quite often his diary is very honest very blunt quite vivid he expresses his feelings about other people in show business so this is a brilliant book and this is the book that I've read more times than any other book that I've ever owned in my life the Kenneth Williams diaries I I do recommend that you read this it is sometimes funny it is sometimes heartbreaking but you won't want to put it down as I didn't this is my second copy the first copy fell to pieces because I read it so many times <laughs> so for those who are wondering about my taste in books now you know can we find this book in France yes I think so I think you should be able to find all of those books in France Mr Duncan I am Egyptian and I benefit from your lessons I am very grateful for your help I want to be a professional in English and I like this language very much sometimes I practice English by myself there's no problem with that you do it if it works for you do it that's what I say it is almost time for me to go can you believe it in fact I have gone slightly over it is now 18 minutes away from four o'clock here in the UK it is time for me to say goodbye yes I think you you might be able to buy those books on Amazon or maybe even on Kindle I'm not sure if there is a Kindle version uh, of this book I'm not sure if there is a Kindle version of this I don't know but but I prefer reading the, the proper book I'm an old-fashioned man so so I love reading books I like to turn the pages and read it is my favorite pastime I like flicking through a book I like reading I like to turn the pages there is something very special about reading from a book that is it it's time to go thank you Mr Duncan for this interesting class enjoy your afternoon tea yes I am going to have a cup of tea and a tea cake I'm hoping that Mr Steve is now in the kitchen preparing my little snack and tonight we are having salmon it's Sunday it's salmon night thanks for your lovely messages today it's been a very busy one I will see you next Saturday from midday live I will show you the details again 
live lessons saturday 12 midday sunday 2 p.m and a new full english lesson will be here every wednesday so on wednesday there will be a new full english lesson as well and i am up high in the sky i wonder where i'll be find out on wednesday and you can contact me through facebook email and also you can make a donation as well that is it it's time to go this is mr duncan in the birthplace of english saying thanks for watching me today on this lovely sunday afternoon here in england and of course until the next time we meet here on youtube whether it's live or recorded you know what's coming next yes you do ta-ta for now